Eddie Futch had moved to L.A. in 1952, but he had done a lot of work back east in Detroit and Philadelphia, and, you know, people knew him, and they used to send fighters from Philly out to L.A. They would say, go see Eddie, he'll do you some good. So this had been going on for a while, so it probably leads us up to this pivotal year in boxing history, 1966. In 1966, Luther Burgess came to Los Angeles to find his old friend and mentor, Eddie Futch, and he brought with him Hedgeman Lewis, who at that point was 8-0, and, and Futch was to train him out of the Hoover Street gym. Hedgeman Lewis really lacked punching power, but he was very athletic, and more importantly for Eddie, he was teachable. Eddie created a unique syndicate involving Ryan O'Neill, Bill Cosby, and Robert Goulet to support Lewis while he trained. And Lewis rewarded their faith with his performances because they were above expectations. Syndication of a fighter's contract wasn't new, but Eddie was using the contacts he'd made from living in California for over 10 years to do something different. Eddie guided him to the New York State Athletic Commission version of the welterweight title and two shots at the title held by Jose Napoles, which were unsuccessful. First one was real controversial. And... His very last fight was a challenge of John Stracy's WBA welterweight title, where he was stopped in 10. After this, Lewis became part of Team Futch and worked in camp for a number of years. Because Hedgeman Lewis was so teachable, he became a great model for the Team Futch, as what they were trying to do as far as when boxers with a complete game who could outbox superior punchers. Team Futch went on to create 22 world champions over the next 25, 30 years. Also in 1966, Fell Torrance had his last professional fight and retired and joined Eddie to work in camp. Uh, but you'll have to come back for part two for the rest of the story of 1966.